at the source of reality that would unify these theories. And he didn't agree much with quantum theory because quantum theory is based on axioms that are not based on um, sound mechanical functions. Einstein thought there must be some underlying geometric fundamental patterns of creation that could be expressed um, mathematically and theoretically that would unify our understanding of creation. Did these theories, Nassim, the theories we're going to talk about at the great depth with you tonight, did they ever get to the point where they answered for you those major questions that we are all confronted by, and that is, who are we, what are we, why are we here, what happened to the Big Bang, was there a Big Bang? Were you ever able to get these answers for your own curiosity? Absolutely. Actually, you know, um, and, and it's a big statement because the, the question you're asking are very, you know, fundamental and primal questions. And uh, certainly the, worry, the, the mathematics and the physics I've been writing and the philosophy that can be extracted from it and so on has answered many of some of the most fundamental questions um, uh, people have about their existence and uh, what is the universe, how does it work, how did they get to be here, what is consciousness, what, what is the role of consciousness in reality and all these questions that we're basically born with. Uh, I think from the first instance that we can remember, typically, you know, this, these questions arise. Sure. I, I have a four-year-old that you know, I've been touring for a few months now, and I was driving across the country, um, well, across the desert in Nevada, and um, and he was sitting beside me in the car, and he all of a sudden, out of the blue, asked me, well, after asking, you know, he's in the why moment. And just, why. just like you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he asked me, what is reality, Papa? And, uh, you know, that kind of took me back. <laughs> Four years old? Four years old. Gosh, he's, he's, uh, he's 54 years ahead of me. I haven't even asked you that one yet. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think the, these questions arise fairly uh, soon. And, um, and I, think, I think if the question's there, they, there is an answer for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Do you find that the... Now, you, of course, a great thinker, but there are a lot of scientists out there, Nassim, who just don't put it all together. Uh, you know, um, no, name to, no need to mention names, but they don't seem to understand the tie-in between, as you say, consciousness, who are we, what are we, and the rest of the universe. I mean, they're, they're so science-oriented, they don't look at the bigger picture. Yes. Well, you know, I think, uh, you know that chasm I was talking about mm -hmm. between a relativistic equation and quantum theory? I think that's even deeper than that. It's, you know, the one predicts infinities and the other one boundary condition. Well, I, you know, it, it's a deeper chasm. Uh, you know, typ typically the scientific world um, look at things in finite boundaries, you know, um, uh, linear function, closed system, and um, and the people that are a little more spiritual tend to see things in more like infinite potential, infinite possibilities, and so on. And you know, I think at this time it's important that the two get together. Um, and and I think a new level of science is going to emerge from that that merging of these two thoughts. And. Uh, and, but, but you would be surprised um, the change that's occurring in the scientific world at this time. It's remarkable. Uh, I mean, when, uh, 15 years ago when I was going to physics conference, it was so crucial that you never, ever altered the C word, you know. If you said consciousness in a physics meeting, you'd get ostracized on the spot. Um, um, now, uh, it's becoming very popular for some of the most uh, advanced physicists and, and well-known scientists to, you know, do very good research.
research on trying to find where consciousness fits in the picture and how it has uh, an influence on matter and so on. And so there is more and more willingness to look at it, and I think there's quite a bit of openness that's occurring. Nassim, uh, I've got to ask you, and we're going to take a break in about a minute or so, and we'll come right back, but you bring up some incredible things in, in your DVD series, Crossing the Event Horizon, Rise to the Equation, where you talk about ancient civilizations and, you know, their work. How did they know the incredible things they knew without high technology, assuming they didn't have it? Right. Well, you know, it's... Um we we need a little more time to discuss that but basically if you if you study ancient texts and you and, and as i did and and so did uh, Isaac Newton Newton spent a lot of time studying ancient texts and ancient civilization long before he write he wrote stuff on physics but um you find that there is sets of information in there that seems to relate to very advanced knowledge, very advanced physics. And when you study a lot of their monuments and uh, their, the sites, the ancient sites around the world, then you find all sorts of anomalies of, um, of extremely large stones that have been moved very long distances over rivers and mountains. and you know, stones that we can lift today with the largest <laughs> yeah. cranes on Earth. True. You know, there's all sorts of bizarre things you find around the world like this. And if there was like one or, you know, you could say, well, it's an anomaly, but like there's many, 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 like thousands of these uh, different examples. And, uh, and some of these examples go back and uh, now you know with new sites that are being found almost 10,000 years ago and uh, so um, there's evidence you know and I'm going to say this loosely there's evidence that there was very advanced knowledge on our planet long prior to our written history and that we may have something to learn about what they left for us at this time Let's talk a little bit more about that when we come back. Nassim Hedermain's website, The Renaissance, and I'll spell it, R-E-S-O-N-A-N-C-E, TheResonanceProject.org. His website is uh, pretty remarkable. So if you haven't had an opportunity to get it, we've also made it easy for you. There's a direct link at ours, coasttocoastam.com. We'll be back in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. I'm George Norrie. Special guest tonight. Nassim Haramein, as we talk about things going on in the universe. More to come on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. I'm George Norrie. We're with Nassim Haramein. Nassim, if they had this high technology, where do you think they got it? Well, you know, when you look at our universe, um, and if you do an analysis, um, you know, a, a, not so long ago we thought there would be very low chances for other planets with life out there um, because we thought there was not much water around in our universe. And, you know, water is one of the fundamental building blocks for life to emerge, at least life the way we know it. And uh, so, you know, we thought there was probably not many planets out there with, uh, with life. But um, since then, maybe in the last 15 years, we've had uh, all sorts of equipment scanning our night sky. And when we look around, actually, we have a really hard time finding places in the universe where water is not present. We see... <laughs> spectral lines of water everywhere we look. And so our, um, our universe seems to be abundant with water. We even see clouds of uh, organic material flying around. I mean, there is all sorts of, um, of evidence that um, the building blocks for life are out there uh, in abundance. And then as well, in the last um, 10 years, we've discovered uh, many uh, that many many stars 
uh, seem to have uh, planets orbiting them uh, much more than we expected they would be. And uh, we're getting better and better at uh, observing these planetary systems. And so uh, since there's much more planets than we thought there was, and there's much more water than we thought there was, uh, you know, the possibility of life is very, very high. And now look at our civilization. Look at the developments that we undergo, that we have undergone uh, in the last, uh, what, 150 years? Of, it's been dramatic. It's amazing. We went from horse and buggy to going to the moon and, you know, although, so, you know, uh, <laughs> flying.